Hi, it's Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert, and this video is the second in a series of three videos looking at ways to use the Waves Max Bass, Renaissance Bass, and Low Air plugins in audio post production. And in this video, we're going to concentrate on the Renaissance Bass plugin. Renaissance Bass is similar to Max Bass, just as Renaissance EQ is similar to the Q series of Waves EQ plugins. Renaissance Bass works in a very similar way to Max Bass by creating harmonics from the existing bass content. And the reason it works is because our hearing can reconstruct the missing fundamental from just the harmonics. So if we enhance the harmonics using Max Bass or Renaissance Bass, then our hearing recognizes the relationship of the harmonics and fills in the missing fundamental so you hear the low sound even though it's not coming out of the speakers. This trick, of course, is not a recent discovery. Organ builders have known about it for centuries and use it to emulate long pipes that were too expensive for the owner. Now, the process in Renaissance Bass is a refined version of what we explored in the first video with Max Bass. So let's see how Renaissance Bass handles the same examples. One of the jobs I turn to Renaissance Bass for is to enhance the sound of voiceovers, especially in trailers and promos and music documentaries. Here's a clip from a recent podcast where Russ is talking about the Waves DigiGrid. Waves already have a presence with DigiCo in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the DigiGrid system. So there we go. You can definitely hear that Russ's voice has got much more deep resonances to it. Very nice. So let's take a look at the plugin and what all the different controls do. Well, the two main controls are the frequency here and the intensity. Now, the frequency you can consider like a crossover frequency. And basically, any sounds below the crossover are going to be processed and harmonics created to bring them further up. The intensity is really how strong you want those harmonics to be. There is a center of zero, and you can have less or more. We've got two level meters. So the one here on the right is the level meter for the harmonics. We already have a presence with DigiCo in the live world, and this was really created for the live world. And, and then the one on the left shows well. the level of the original bass. Now, there isn't that much original bass in Russ's voice, certainly not very much below 88 hertz, and that's the reason that the meter isn't displaying very much. But as you'll see later on, sounds with significant amounts of bass will display on this meter. And then up here we've got this little button, which is either in or out. And this basically enables or disables the original bass, the direct sound. So when it's out, the original direct sound waves already have a presence with digico in the doesn't live come world. through and this was really created for the live world and, and again this is really useful when processing well. audio for replay over smaller speakers and then we've got a gain control as well and this really is an overall output gain waves already have a presence with digico in the live world and this was really created for the live world and, now and then we've got a meter here which is displaying well. the output so level the from the plugin so in many respects it's a much simpler interface than the max bass interface but it's still a very powerful plugin nonetheless another thing i use renaissance bass for is giving sound effects that are lacking low end some low end impact Take a listen again to this gunshot. So that may well be a realistic recording, but sometimes reality is a little boring. And so we like to be able to enhance the sounds. And this so often happens with gunshots. We now expect gunshots to have a lot more low end than they actually do in reality. And so it's really useful to be able to turn to something like Renaissance Bass to give me that low end impact. So if we unbypass the plugin and just start to wind it in. So again, it's possible to clip the output. So we'll just cancel the clip indicator and maybe just bring the intensity down a little bit. Okay, 
maybe a little bit less. Or what I could do is to go into Pro Tools and just bring the clip gain down a little bit and that will enable me to keep the intensity up nice and high. Like that. So that's our handgun. So what about the machine guns? So this is the sound we had before. So what about with Renaissance bass? There you go, so much better. It's also really good for beefing up explosions like this one. So bringing Renaissance bass in. And again, we can adjust the crossover frequency. Maybe bring the clip gain down a little bit, just to make sure we're not clipping. And you can see here that we've now got some indication on the original bass meter. So again, Renaissance bass is really useful for processing and getting some more low end into sound effects recordings. Although it may not look like it, you can still use Renaissance bass for prepping content for small speakers in a similar way to the one I showed you with Max bass in the first video. However, there is only the option to turn on or off the direct sound, unlike Max bass, which has a level control. Now, the frequency control should be set to the point where the smaller speakers stop reproducing the low frequency sounds. And with the intensity at zero, this will roughly give you an equal level of perceived bass by using only the harmonics. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the Digico system. For me, this is where the Renaissance bass plugin really starts to shine in processing full mixes. Just have a listen to how it handles the music on its own. So we now bring in the voiceover. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the Digico system. And that's really, really nice and smooth. Now there is a selection of presets with Renaissance Bass, but you won't find them here in the normal Pro Tools location, you'll find them in the Waves dedicated plugin presets location here. So if we press load, you can see there's a selection of presets. The one I want to show you here is Nose Job. And I've got it inserted here on the track with Russ's voice when he was talking about the DigiGrid. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the Digico system. Yeah, well, that definitely makes him talk down his nose very nicely. And there is also some featured artist presets here as well, from a variety of people, including quite a few from Dave Pensado. So those will hopefully give you a starting point to work from, as so often presets do. Now in the last video in this series, we'll be taking a look at the Waves Low Air plugin and see what that has to offer. See you again soon.